welcome back ladies and gentlemen well now we have an industry presentation on transforming e governance by ajay call head states and local government india amazon internet services private limited welcome mr call hello everyone absolute pleasure to be here talking to you today with india on the path to be one of the top 3 global economies by 23 we are at the cusp of an opportunity one that can make a new dynamic developed and a digitally enabled nation digital technology serves as a catalyst to turn diversity into opportunity as is evident from trends we have seen 500% rise in tele consultation so far 90% increase in digital payments estimated three fold growth in e-commerce phenomenal isn't it as i look into the future there are four trends that i see can shape the vision of india getting digitally transformed now let me talk about what these four trends are and how they are going to take shape in the times to come the first one is the digital hub now as per forrester study about 76% of the ceos believe that their business model is going to change dramatically in the next you know few years and this change is going to be led by cloud with government's vision to transform india into a digitally empowered society and a knowledge economy we are witnessing an unprecedented shift to cloud even in the you know government departments both at the central level and as well as the state level and we are witnessing a humongous number of saas providers saas players come in into the market today globally there are close to about 170000 saas players and is expected by 2025 this number is going to be running in millions right and with india as a rich source of software talent this provides a humongous amount of opportunity for our people to be part of this whole change to keep to keep pace with the technological changes the number of workers that are globally needed for this digitally new skill sets that would be required um it it needs people to be digitally savvy and digitally skilled enough to take on these jobs which are not even present today AWS helps bridge this you know uh, skill need and we've been offering a lot of you know skills across the globe um you know across the the wide variety of people to be able to incorporate and inculcate these skills across APJ we've trained more than half a million people in the last few years looking at the second uh, you know part of it uh innovation maturity is something that is really taking by storm india currently is the third largest startup ecosystem in the world and this ecosystem will get diversified many folds by the confluence of entrepreneur ambition technology talent and favorable policies currently we have about more than 50000 startups and about 50 unicorns it's expected by 25 we're going to double this number we're going to have closed about a lack of startups and about 100 unicorns imagine what this is going to do to us overall as a society as an economy and and the kind of changes it's going to bring about looking at the startup community and the changes it it is supposed to bring about it starts from a very initial thought and initial idea of innovation that individual entrepreneurs will have and aws supports them with humongous amount of a uh, support mechanism to ensure that they are they are well taken care of as they go in this journey of moving from a small startup to a larger one and then eventually to a unicorn with aws public sector um you know startup ramp program um there are multiple number of startups that we cover and guide them and and help them with lot of technology support that is needed in addition to that we also have aws activate program plus few other programs as well that are meant to be specifically focused 
for nurturing and, and grooming these startups with all the best possible support that we can provide. Now, with these kind of innovation hubs or, or startups getting into diverse ecosystems, these are going to be fueled by a large talent pool, you know, which leads me to the next uh, mega trend of high volume employment talent. And, and India is the digital capability hub of the world with around 75% of global digital talent present in our country. Now with 4.2 million developers, India is number one developer pool on the planet. And this rich talent fused with one of the biggest transformations that COVID has actually catalyzed. Working from anywhere will enable the talent pool to be able to tap from anywhere in the world. Now imagine somebody sitting out in a remote corner of this country and being able to solve some of the problems anywhere in the world is going to be a humongous opportunity. And with the kind of talent pool that we have in the country today, it's going to be extremely, extremely relevant, not only to the country, but you know, global as a, as a you know, uh, canvas to be able to help and support various organizations at various levels to be able to be worked upon. The fourth one, a very important one, is the connected economy. And aided by government policy impetus, world-class tech ecosystems and widespread, you know, deployments of AI, ML, IoT, blockchain, all of these solutions, India will become a hub of world-class localized digital infrastructure. Government already has digital rails in place where Aadhaar, UPI, you know, which has enabled scale to happen. And I do see a lot of organizations coming and helping build this whole ecosystem. A lot of CEOs that we work with, both at the central government as well as the state governments to ensure that we provide the entire ecosystem for the states or the center or the various entrepreneurs to be able to come together and, and partner on this journey of creating a well-oiled, a well-enabled ecosystem for this entire connected economy to be able to work seamlessly. Okay, so said that, let me move on to my next um, area, which is what is the Digital India's overall vision? And how is AWS aligned to that? Now, as some of us may know, the Digital India mission is, is set on three pillars. It is about digital infrastructure as a utility for every citizen. It's about governance and services on demand. And it's about digital economy of citizens. And when we look at digital infrastructure as a utility for every citizen, the problem that we saw there, and we work very closely with governments, is to ensure that there is a good amount of connectivity in the entire length and breadth of the country. That today is the basic expectation a citizen will have. As we say, the cradle to um, grave identity that, that government is wanting to ensure that every individual has, imagine the amount of scale that is needed to make sure that this runs you know, extremely successfully. Like that, there are multiple areas to ensure that there are enormous amount of efforts being done for easy access to citizen, you know, common services so that people are able to access the platform. Now, when we look at the governance of services on demand, we're looking at a, a very seamless integration of, of systems, a seamless integration of services that government is able to provide so that as, as a citizen, one doesn't have to go across multiple platforms and multiple, you know, routes to be able to get the services that they require. Availability of services, not only off the, the, the show, but even on the real time basis is going to be extremely important. The pace at which we are moving, the pace at which the services are required, we need the services to be extremely, extremely available you know, in real time basis. We're also looking at some of the latest technology being leveraged in this area. Like for example, the geospatial technology, which is helping us to create a new flavor you know, by virtue of which a lot of these, you know, problems can not only be solved, but a lot of innovation can be built in. And when we look at digital empowerment of citizens, we are looking at, at, at universally, you know, um, accustomed, universally uh, accepted digital resources that people can use anywhere in the world um, without having to do any much of interoperability or compatibility challenges. Likewise, you know, for example, as a good example, 
lot of the government uh, norms have been eased by virtue of the, the for example, um, citizens not required to come physically to, to banks or to the, the pension offices. So a lot of those uh, requirements have been moved to a digital way now, which is helping the citizens in a many, many different ways, um, so to speak. Let's let's now look at uh, how has the overall e-governance in our country evolved. And uh, as you can see in the slide as well, we have looked at it by virtue of how has the design of the change to business on one side impacted and the role of e-governance moved over a period of time from being in just enabler to, to moving into being a transformer. Now, when you look at this, we used to look at e-gov services as a basic fundamental layer of just providing information. It was about a few decades ago that our expectation from an e-governance platform or a service was just that. But over a period of time, what we've seen that this has moved towards a being a lot more interactive. And, and there was a possibility of citizens having some kind of an interface, some kind of interaction with the government, which is the services that they're, that they're getting across various areas. And then over a period of time, we moved into an era in which we started transactions being done as part of the e-governance services. And today, we are at a stage where we're looking at about this whole e-governance services getting into a transformative way in, in a big transformation across the country. So that's the change at which the e-governance services have moved. And if I have to you know, provide a peak view of how AWS is aligned to this whole evolution of e-governance, we look at it in terms of three ways. To begin with, we look at the basic digital foundation layer, which is the availability of basic you know, level of fundamental needs that a citizen would have. And, and we are working closely with governments across various areas to ensure that these basic services are well taken care of. To the extent where we then look at how does it create a digital reach? Because end of the day, as we know, we have a humongous amount of population, which is, you know, in tier three, tier four, tier five cities. And, and the, the success, the true measurement of success on e-governance services is the capabilities of being able to provide these services to the last mile. And it needs a humongous amount of technology enabled services to be able to do that. And lastly, by, by putting this whole thing together and creating a, some kind of a digital value, which is in terms of providing the, the real time services to citizens by ensuring that the applications are are a two-way street for people to be able to access, adopt, consume, and also you know, provide inputs in case there are certain changes that are needed to be done. So that means you know, there's a humongous integrated approach that we take when we work with the, the governments at the central level, the governments at the state level, and there are multiple partnerships that are required to ensure that this whole thing works seamlessly. Let me give you an example here. Um, as you would know that there are various sectorial areas that government is really investing on to make them a lot more robust, agile, and to be able to grow to the next level. Whether it is agriculture, be it healthcare, be it um, uh, uh, public safety, or any of the other sectors, there are a humongous amount of efforts being put in to ensure that each of these sectors are able to cater to the needs of citizens today. And there are policies that are being established, that are being worked out to ensure a kind of a standardized approach that is taken at a country level so that, so that there's a uniformity in the service expectations and delivery that happens across the board. Now, as an example, let me talk to you about the healthcare uh, you know, space where we have seen that because of COVID, a lot of areas came to visibility in terms of the improvement areas, the inefficiencies which were there in the system. And that, with that as a backing, there's a lot of transformative work that has happened in this space. But before we go there, let's look at how the paradigm shift has impacted in the healthcare space. So if you look at it in the few, few you know, decades ago, we used to be working more in a space which was in a computerization era. You know, the, the basic foundation layer of uh, systems getting digitized, systems getting computerized, 
um, you know, discrete processes being worked upon. And that was the initial phase uh, that we got kickstarted with. And then we moved towards an area which, area which was an automation era, and which was more to um, create an end-to-end -end digitalization services through disparate systems, right? But if you look at it today, we have, we have surpassed both of these stages and we are looking at something called as an open digital ecosystem era, which is creation of an open, scalable, interoperable, you know, and, and tech infrastructure that is able to not only evolve, but create a humongous amount of shift in the way we operate in the entire healthcare space. And, and I'm really glad that um, with the Ayushman Bharat Health Mission that has been recently uh, launched, um, there are various aspects coming together as part of the overall mission. And, and, and I'm sure as and when the, in, the, in this process, in this journey of states adopting this in totality, it will create the best of the breed um, ecosystem for our citizens to be able to get the best of healthcare, uh, viable healthcare, available at any point of time, and at the same time, being a lot more technically capable. Now, broadly speaking, this, this are, there are six areas that we're looking at as part of this whole mission. First is to create digital health IDs. So every individual is going to have a specific ID that is going to be aligned to that individual. You know, creation of registries, health lockers, to ensure that all of the, you know, detailing about prescriptions, about tests, and, and you know, all of that gets consolidated in a digital flavor. Telemedicine has been very, very effective in the last few years that we have seen. How do we kind of take that to the next level and make that as a formal full-fledged practice? is something that is going to get also captured. E-pharmacy is a big area in the country like India. You know, this is going to be humongously, you know, uh, 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 area that, that's going to be coming of ease to a lot of citizens. And then anonymization and content uh, consent management of data because of various changes that are happening on the data, data front, this is going to be extremely important. At AWS, we have huge portfolio that we have to offer. But when we look at specific industries, specific sectors, we have a lot of expertise that has been built in. Whether it is the overall 30 plus of years, we have as a comprehensive and broadly cloud uh, service provider uh, being there in the industry today. There's a lot of competency that we have built over these years. We have seven plus years of dedicated you know, uh, practice built around healthcare and life sciences. And that comes very handy when it comes to not only you know, looking at what is needed today, but also plan for future, looking at what potentially could be the requirement that would be coming up, it, it, are we well equipped for that? And, and at the same time, you know, we have a whole bunch of army of people you know, who are coming from the industrial sectors, you know, who understand not only from the digital background, but also from the industry's core requirements as well. So with this, there's a lot of value that we create for the health as an industry. Like that, um, whether, like I said earlier, whether it is the agriculture as an as an in sector, or it is education as a sector, or it is uh, land records as a sector. So there are similar areas that we work today across the globe uh, with with the, the governments and the uh, you know departments. Having said all of this, it's not possible to do it alone. It needs a lot of partnerships. It needs a lot of integration um, with the providers, with the executors, with the delivery uh, providers on the ground. And I want to quote here an example where we partnered with one of our uh, valued partners, uh, Freshwork, and, and, and Step One during the COVID times. And this was a solution that was created in a very short span of time and, and I'm glad to share that, you know, we had about 70,000 doctors and volunteers, about 8. 8.2 8. million people, you know, across the country. And about lakhs and lakhs of callers, so much of um, questions and queries that people had. And, and we were able to ensure that every caller, every person who needed the, the consultation was, was getting the due uh, time. 
because at that point of time because of the reason that covid uh, uh, was the top priority hospitals were not looking at either non covid patients or patients who had mild symptoms about covid so this came up with the kind of population that we have in india this came up as a very very handy uh, solution and a very viable one now think about it this solution did not happen you know just like that you know there there was a good collaboration that happened between us between freshworks between step one to ensure that we are looking at a scale that can grow in in not days maybe in hours and do we have a bandwidth to be able to provide the the overall overarching platform to be able to manage such a scale and and mind you this has to be built managing the overall length and breadth of the country now imagine if this one solution can be looked at it can be worked about in just hours what potential do we have what level and what depth of technology interventions we can make for social good for human progress for solving some of the problems that we today have and and look at how do we make our future bright for years to come with that i'm once again glad that i am here with you today on the session um i'm also happy to share that we have our uh, booths available do pay a visit and find out some of the use cases that we have worked upon with some of the other government entities and in case there are any further submissions or suggestions or questions feel free to share we'll be happy to take it over at some point of time later with that let me conclude my session thank you very much take care thank you very much mr paul for a precise and informative presentation